Hi everyone, my name is James Ivey with Antelope Audio. Reverb is one of, if not the most commonly used audio effect. It allows us to add space to our recordings, creating an audio picture of the room our music was recorded in. Now, as many of you know, the current lineup of Antelope Audio interfaces include the amazing Auraverb. Auraverb is our stunning sounding built-in digital reverb processor that can easily be used to add a sense of ambience to headphone mixes using the Antelope Audio internal software control panel. However, you can also use Auraverb in your DAW sessions for mixing. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. After all, it would seem a waste to only use a fantastic sounding plugin like this for monitoring, right? So let's dive in. The Auraverb processor can be accessed by viewing Mixer 1 in the Antelope Audio control panel. We have eight primary controls, including color, pre-delay, early reflection gain, late reflection delay, richness, reverb time, reverb size, which is also indicated in the center of the Auraverb panel, and reverb length. We then have an on-off or bypass switch, and in the center we have the ability to save and recall presets. Add all this together and you have a very powerful yet easy to use reverb and delay processor. But how do we get the signals from our DAW into Auraverb and then back into our DAW from Auraverb? Well, that just requires a little creative routing from your DAW to and from the Antelope Audio control panel. And in this video, we're going to start backwards. In this example, I'm using the Antelope Audio Orion Studio Synergy Core interface, but the principles are the same for the full range of Antelope Audio audio interfaces. In our DAW, in this case Pro Tools, we need to create a stereo reverb return. This is just a stereo audio channel. Now the reason I'm using an audio channel and not an auxiliary track is so that I can record the reverb output if I want to. The only disadvantage to using an audio channel is I have to keep the input monitor enabled to be able to listen to the reverb. A small price to pay, I feel. If you imagine that Auraverb is an external hardware reverb, then you might start to understand the routing even quicker. So let's label our reverb return track and assign it to inputs three and four. Now let's add a reverb send in Pro Tools. I could route these to an internal send bus, a reverb send master if you like, in Pro Tools, or you can, as I'm going to do, route all the reverb sends to output three and four directly. And that's the DAW side of the routing done. I'm assuming here that we have no advanced routing set up in your DAW. Here, the inputs and outputs are routed one to one, ins to outs. Now, over in the Antelope Audio control panel, we can route from computer play three and four, which is the output three and four from Pro Tools, into inputs one and two on mixer one. The stereo output of mixer one, marked one and two, we route back to computer record inputs three and four. So now we've completed the round trip. All that's left to do in mixer one is first pull down the faders for inputs one and two. We can stereo link them if we wish. These can act like our wet dry mix control as the send to the reverb is pre-fader. Let's pan inputs one and two, hard left and hard right, then bring up the sends to the effect. And now we can set some effect send level from our DAW and tweak the reverb parameters directly in Auraverb.
So that's just a quick video showing you how to use the amazing Antelope Audio AuraVerb, which comes free with your audio interface inside your DAW. And remember, because AuraVerb is part of the processing signal chain within your interface, it puts absolutely no load on your host computer. So everybody wins. So I hope you enjoyed that. My name's James Ivy, and I'll see you again very soon.